Welcome to Follow the Project here on TAF TV, and I'm Sue, your host, Ekong Bright. Today we are live at Rumumasi, where the debris to move out from the drainage along this road is being carried out. Now, it is interest you to know that this particular project is being done by the Commissioner of Works in person of Mr. Iloka Tase in collaboration with Geodynamics Company just so that this road could go back to a good state. Now, if you are a current and a frequent user of this particular road, you will know that in times like this, in times like this, I'm talking about during the raining season, there has been a whole lot of flooding happening on this particular road. And it, it is an eyesore for the people of River State. And this is one road that is linked to the major city in Port Harcourt. So if you're a frequent user of this road, you will know that when it comes to the rainy season like this, this road becomes so flooded that it is difficult for vehicles to go through it. And this will disrupt the free flow of movement. And this can also lead to the loss of properties. I would say this is a welcoming development coming to the people of Rumumasi and also other people making use of this particular road. I want to commend the Commissioner for Works of River State talking about Mr. Eloka Tase for making this project a success because looking at this road and everything that has been happening here over time, it is a difficult one for people that are making use of this road, talking about vehicular movement along this particular road. Join me as I go out into the street to interview people so that they can tell us what they feel and what they know as regards to this road. Don't go nowhere. currently looking at what is happening right now. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit history about what is going on here? Well, what happened here is that this is Roma Masi, as it's popularly known, a bad road. And uh, it's been a bad spot for flash flood for quite some time now. And eventually, a couple of days ago, the governor was coming back from uh, Andon. And uh, what has been happening here happened. Happened and, to uh, you? Immediately, he gave orders that uh, the remedial measure be put in place immediately. And it's on the basis of that that Commissioner for Works took up and invited us. We are geodynamic services and uh, this job is actually more of a direct labor of Ministry of Labor. We are just like a consultant to them in trying to make sure we find the source of uh, the flood and then put in an immediate uh, remediation and action to ensure that uh, it does not repeat itself. That's why we are here. Okay, now, so looking at what you guys are doing here, I'd say it's a, it's a commendable one because um, we can see a whole lot of debris are being taken out of, of the gutters and all of that. So, in, in spite and in light of with what is going on here right now, do you see this as a measure to stop the flood of happening in this particular environment? Yes, actually, eventually, I was to some extent born here and grew up in this room, Masa. And uh, this thing has persisted for long before the Las Vegas carried out this remedial measure, what you are seeing here, which eventually became blocked. And uh, called for this immediate one now to ensure that at least if it's not completely stopped, we should send it to the manageable level where it was. Where it might rain, there might be small gathering, but I know a couple of minutes after the rain, the water will go up. Because there are all these manholes you see here are connected to the other side, which in turn empties into the creek. A bridge. So what we are trying to do now is to open up all these assets so that the water can flow. Definitely we are sure it's going to make it a lot of impact on the job is flowing. Okay now so we saw recent happenings of flood happening in Lagos and this is if I could say it's because of something like this and so over time we've seen cases whereby in different states um, we've seen flood cases and this is the rainy season. Uh, as the case may be. So, in spite of all of this, what is your message to um, people living around environments like this, what they should do? Well, uh, some of these things, outside the natural forces, we have human factors that cause them. Because if you look into these debris we are thinking of, you see tires, you see wood, you see plates, you see broken glasses. Obviously, these are things of human effect, which are emptied into the drains. So, we we'll ask people, to be more practical and proactive in their attitude, especially in the area of disposal of the waste. 
a lot of things, these things, if you go there, you see a big tire coming from that street. Obviously, if there was a way, it would have emptied into the drain. So obviously, despite what will happen as per natural causes, we advise people to improve in their conduct in the management of waste. That will go a long way, because if these things are free, we will not have, what happened here will not happen. But because they have been blocked by human factor, that's why we are having them. So that's what the major advice I would give the people who live around here. Because if they live like that, definitely rain will be falling. I mean, this is a we are in the tropics. Rain will fall, it will fall and come and go. But the way we manage it is what matters. And that's just the major advice I would give to the people. Okay, so with, with all of this, I believe this is a commendable one coming out from the Commissioner of Works of River State, putting this into motion. And I believe something like this should be carried out along major cities also in, in River yes, State. In fact, this is not the first time this is his second coming as Commissioner for Works. In the first tenor, we did a major, we handed a major project which we also consulted called the Silting Portacon Project, in which all, virtually all the canals around Portacon Metropolis were fully desilted. And uh, these are things that from time to time should be happening. And uh, definitely, as he has come back now, I'm sure he knows obviously what to do because it's not a, how do they say it? He's not a, a, a new horse in the team. He uh, obviously knows what to do. I'm sure he has just started work, and more of these actions will come to play. Definitely. Thank you very much, sir. Hello, sir. Can I know you? Yeah, my name is Victor Siopu. All right. So, um, can you tell us about what is going on here right now? Okay. Um, as you can see, um, a lot of work is been going. A lot of uh, mechanical and civil work is going as a result of uh, the flooding or the flash flooding that happened here just some days back. Okay. And this particular location we are talking about between uh, First Bank Junction in uh, Potako, that's a bar route between First Bank Junction to Market Junction. If you notice, or if you know this town so well, you find out that when it rains heavily, if you are driving, you just avoid this region. It's been there for donkey years. And I'm so excited that today, we are here to see a major work being carried out right now, okay? It is happening live and I'm so happy. Why am I so happy? Because we cannot allow flooding to destroy our infrastructure see if you go to east west road east west road right now is still suffering from the flooding of 2022 that's and it was a, a, as a matter of poor planning poor planning not going ahead of time to make sure that whenever it happens let's say for instance very heavy rainfall happens whenever it happens you know that at least the minimal blockage of drainages will not be the factor that will cause flooding mm -hmm. yeah we understand that there are a lot of planning issues with our country and that is the reason why if you ask me that is the reason why that 2022 um, um uh, ravaging happened in this country mind you it was reported that 603 persons died nationwide and about 82 houses were damaged over 1.4 million persons were displaced and we're in 2024. The alarm is going so, so loud that we need to be careful. We need to make our way straight right now. Make sure that you prepare about what is happening. We cannot overnight um, stop deforest deforestation, okay? And we know that, okay, let me not even go back to what has caused all these issues. But then, it is important to know that the Commissioner for Works in River State, the Governor of the state, have joined hands together to say that, see, at least for this part, okay, for this part, let's make sure we prepare things. Look at these walls. Look at what is happening to these walls. I heard that about a few days ago that the level, it, the, the level of, uh, of flooding that happened here was uh, almost about uh, one meter. One meter of flooding. That's what we are talking about. And mind you, the economy is so, so, so tight that if you are a car user and your, your, your vehicle gets into this kind of flooding or more, just forget about it. I have countless um, uh, friends that have faced this kind of, and it happened like a, a, a twinkle of an eye. It happened so, yeah, so, so fast. You get into the flooding, you can't go back, you can't go forward, your car gets damaged. 
and we cannot face that kind of issue right now. So for everybody out there, I need to also tell the, tell the public right now that, see, you need to be cautious about how you dispose waste. If you also check deep down, yes, right here, we have a mostly um, a, um, a loamy soil, packed up soil, and if you notice, it's been a long while this, this uh, place has been um, maintained. And that is why we have more of sand. Yes, we still have a, a lot of uh, waste, okay? But when it comes to the proportion, it is about 80 to 20. 20% waste, 80% sand. So um, it is, a, um, uh, will I say, it is a lot easier right now for them to at least, let's know that we are facing the sand. We are taking them off. I'm even spreading them around. So um, uh, uh, disposing the sand it will not be an issue than when you are disposing waste right now. So big up to the, the construction company for coming out so quickly, so swiftly. Yesterday, it rained so heavily. And uh, oh, come on, you can see the weather. Yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not funny at all. all. It's almost, the weather wants to cry. <laughs> and uh, I'm very, very sure that if rain, even if um, uh, uh, two hours steady rain, if it falls, I'm sure that what they have done so far will curtail the amount of rainfall. So big kudos to you, everybody associated in this. Okay, we saw um, recently um, there were videos and clips coming out of Lagos State as regards to flooding mm. and the effect and impact it has had on the life of the people. Now let's let's leave the technical aspect as it may be and let's talk about the economic aspect of flooding and how it's going to affect the free flow of movement in the state. Now, with all of this happening prior to this time, do you think that with the rate of flooding going on in the country as the case may be is going to affect the country in general but let's come down let's start with river state let's start river state then we move from river state down to the nation at large how do you think that the effect of flooding is going to curtail and bring down the effect of our economic growth <laughs> see so just imagine you are a driver okay you are um uh, you have a car that um you pay monthly Okay, you've collected a car maybe through um, a finan uh -huh, financial institution or whatever. Let's say, for instance, five million, and you are just maybe one million into the deal. And what happens? You get into flooded water. My brother, the setback will be enormous. And that also goes down to the government themselves. Because this road, flooding can destroy this road. And what does that mean? The money that you are supposed to spend in building schools, in building hospitals, you are bring, putting you that money, money to a, a project that you've already done before. Exactly. So it goes hard to the people. It goes hard to the government. It goes, it goes hard to every stakeholder that's involved here. So it is something that you need to beforehand make, hey, come on, everybody, go to your backyard. Religious leaders, schools, everybody put your hands together right now and open up your your gutters. See, you cannot wait. I tell people, you cannot wait for the government to do everything for you. You cannot. You need to take responsibility. You cannot also expect the government to come to your kitchen, pack your waste, and go and dispose. So I'm telling you, <laughs> reverse people, Nigerians in general. See, I know that <laughs> we cannot overemphasize on how we need to take care of our environment by ourselves. It's not just about the government. It is you first before the government. And if we not take care of our environment, we still have children that will come. Are we going to bring birth children in a, in a filthy environment? Oh, come on. It doesn't sound nice. Man. Now, talking about dirt and, and filthy environment, let's, let's dive out a bit. Now, we, we've heard of the outbreak of cholera, and it's due to dirt and the aspect of the mismanagement of waste. Now, how, what, what message are you giving out to the people as regards to that? Only to the fact that we see that the, 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 the death rate is, is hitting up as the case. The numbers are going up every day and we, we uh, if i can remember vividly uh, two days ago there was a, uh, a headline on the front paper as regards to um, giving the warning to the nyc officials on how to manage the environment and all of that but let's leave the coppers in camp and let's talk about us as individuals in our home what preventive way because we know for a fact the government has given us the waste management agencies that are coming out to pick up our debt and all of that too but regardless of that how can we as individuals work on ourselves in managing waste be prudent in making sure that any field is it a chewing gum field any kind of waste that is within you or that you produce make sure that you dispose it very well that is rule number one Rule number two, if you see an individual causing death around your environment, 
call that person to action. Make sure that that person clears that waste. Because it's not just about you. You must take care of yourself first and make sure that, that your neighbor doesn't harm you. So you make sure and tell. So just imagine if you perform that chain reaction. My brother, you see this waterproof waste we are seeing. You see this kai kai waste that we are seeing. Everybody will be very, very cautious about the waste. So mind you, mind you, cholera that we are shouting and uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that it's happening. But if you also go and check, you find out that some communities, you find out that water is being packed at a particular place, is, uh, as in uh, immovable water, due to blocked drainage, due to um, um, the fields that has been created around the region, which enables these bacteria to transverse and move from one location to the other. So just imagine that everybody is cautious about the waste that they produce, my brother, these issues will be highly minimal in our communities. Okay, finally, before I before I let you go, now we know in River State, every the, the state government is giving out projects on road, and as the case may be, and as we can see, we are one of the highways in, in Rumumasi, and a whole lot of things has been happening right now. So, in terms of project um, and carriage and all of that, what advice do you have for? those people in terms of Julius Mega carrying out this project, in terms of the drainage on the road, what plan should they have in mapping out everything they are doing as regards the, the project? They should, should they, for um, for for what it, the case may be, make avenue for good flow of water in that particular 100%, 100%. And it's not just about the construction companies. We also need to uh, talk about, uh, well, I say, the stakeholders here. Yeah? I'm talking about um, environmentalists. I'm talking about the civil engineers we have around us. Um, governance is not just about the governor. It's not just about the commissioner. These persons have one head. So imagine when you get an intellect, an experienced person here or there and there, they come together. When you see something that is not right, come out, come and lay your own uh, advice, come and uh, direct your own advice so that at the end of the day, the entire community, the entire state, the entire city will live well. Because if you shy away from bringing all these ideas to the fora. You find out that yourself, you are also suffering. So just imagine what is happening on this road. You see somebody, let's say for instance, you are passing on the road. You, you see somebody carrying um, a waste bag and throwing it into the, 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 the gutter. My brother, you need to call that person's attention. As a stakeholder, all of us, we are all stakeholders here. You need to call that person in order. Tell the person, take this thing out and go and dispose at the right place because the first person will do second person before you know it, 100 people, before you know it, everywhere gets blocked up. And if it gets blocked up, you that is taking care of your own corner will be affected. So it is a general thing. Both the construction companies, all major stakeholders, everybody, as, as you're a living soul in this state, you make sure that when you see something is going wrong, call for um, other people's attention if you cannot handle it. And at the end of the day, we have a very clear and a safe environment to live in. All right, thank you very much. It's good to have you. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys, we have listened to the engineer that is in charge of this particular project, and he has given us what we need to know as regards this project. And this project is due to the fact that there's been a whole lot of flooding incidents happening here. We see the, the likes of um, cars being spoiled as regards to this flood. But beyond all of that, it will interest you to know that this is not just happening by itself, but because of human influence, we can also say natural causes, because most of the things that are being removed from this drainage are sands, but we could also see the likes of waste. When I mean waste, I'm talking about um, food items and also products gotten from um, shops, talking about nylons and all whatnot. But beyond all of that, I think this is a call out and a cry out to every individual, every member of the public. We should know how to manage our ways just so we could keep our environment clean to avoid um, incidents like this from happening. So guys, we have heard all what is happening here on this particular road at Rumumasi and we hope with this happening, this will reduce the rate of flooding on this particular road. And once again, a big kudos to the Commissioner of Works of River State. So you guys can also be a part of this show. Do well to follow us across all our social media platforms. Do well to like, comment and also share your thoughts about what is going on here in River State. Remember, 
This is Follow the Project here on TAF TV. And I still remain your host, Ekong Bright. Do have a lovely weekend. <laughs>